Hear, O Israel, Yahweh our Elohim, Yahweh is one. shall love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might and these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart and you shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down when you rise up and shall bind them for a sign upon your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes and you shall write them upon the posts of your house and upon your gate. Put your hands together.
Baruch Hashem. Let's just uh, go into prayer now. Um, Father, we just want to thank you for this fellowship that you have um, for us. And we just thank you, Abba, because you're so good. We just worship you and we praise you, Father. Yishem Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. This week's Torah talk is based on Chayi Salah. If you desire to learn more about this week's Bible reading, refer to Genesis chapter 23, verses 1 through 25, 1 Kings chapter 1 through 37, verses 1 through 37, and the reference of the B'ri Chadasha is Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 through 17. Today, I'll be reviewing Genesis 23, verses 17 through 20, and discuss the cave of Machpelah. All right. All praise be to Yahweh who reigns. Blessed are you, Yahweh, our Elohim, King of the universe who has chosen us from amongst the peoples and given us the Torah. Blessed are you, Yahweh, the Torah giver. The reading is, Ve'yakam sadev efron asher v'amechpela asher l'fnei mamre hasadeh ve'hamara asher bo v'chol ha'etz asher basadeh asher v'chol gevu lo sabi. And so the field of Elfon which was in Machpelah facing Mamre, was established as Abraham's possession. This included the field and the cave that was in it and all the trees that were in it in the field, which were within its entire border around. And it was to Abraham as a possession before the eyes of the sons of Ted, in the presence of all who had come within the gates of this of his city. And afterwards, Abraham buried Sarah, his wife, in the cave, in the field of Machpelah facing Mamre, which is Hebron, the land of Canaan. In the field and the cave within it were established to Abraham as burial property purchased from the sons of Chetz. Blessed are you, Yahweh, our Elohim, King of the universe, that gave us Torah's truth as it is placed within us for eternal life. Blessed are you, Yahweh, who gives the Torah. The Cave of Machpelah. In today's Torah talk, we learn that Abraham simply wanted to purchase the Cave of Machpelah. At the time, Ephron owned the cave of Machpelah with the surrounding fields and trees. By purchasing the cave, Abraham would be able to lay Sarah, his wife, to rest. Despite Abraham's request, Ephron refused to just sell Abraham the cave of Machpelah. Ephron wanted to sell the cave along with the surrounding field. So Ephron gave Abraham permission to bury his wife without having to purchase the cave, but Abraham refused. Abraham wanted to purchase the cave of Machpelah. Despite Ephron's generous offer, Abraham knew that if he would accept it, he would offend Ephron. It was then that Abraham prostrated himself in front of all who were witnessing the purchase. Ephra says something along the lines of, what's 400 pieces of silver between us? You're a prince among our people. Ephra's response to Abraham was the commencement of the bidding process for the property in question. And after living so many years in the, in the promised land, Abraham learned the cultural practices of purchase most, most common to the people there. Abraham made 
not have been interested in purchasing the land because he sincerely believed that Yahweh was going to give the land to him and his descendants as an inheritance. Instead of negotiating the price that Ephron presented, Abraham paid Ephron 400 pieces of silver. Then Abraham laid Sarah, his, his wife, to rest in the cave of Machpelah. Why? Why did Abraham settle on the full price that Ephron presented? Why didn't Abraham try to negotiate a better price? It's quite possible that Abraham detested quietly the cultural practices that was common in his day. Then again, it's quite possible that Abraham wanted to prove to all who were present that he had the wealth to pay the amount. By paying the asking price in full, he may have attempted to establish a new standard as to how a payment should be made whenever anyone resided in his camp. Abraham did not borrow the money. Abraham did not place himself in an outstanding debt. If anything, Abraham saved. When the time came, Abraham demonstrated that he was financially stable enough to pay Ephraim the outstanding asking price in the presence of all who were there. After much consideration, I've wondered, why did Abraham opt to lay his wife to rest in this cave? Why didn't he simply bury his wife into the earth? Torah does inform that mankind will return to the dust from which he was made, doesn't it? Torah mentions repetitiously the fields of Mamre, the very same fields where Abraham pitched his tent for several decades. Torah also mentions that the cave of Machpelah was near the fields of Mamre. After much contemplation, it became apparent how important the cave of Machpelah was to Abraham and all who resided with him in the camp. Residing in a tent presents itself with many different challenges. Challenges include, but are not limited to, being subject to harsh weather conditions that would manifest itself from time to time, being vulnerable to the attacks of predators and wild animals, and complete defenselessness from raiding bandits or something as simple as a complete lack of much needed privacy. Indeed, Abraham, Sarah, and all who resided on the Abraham's tent faced many challenges. Provided that the cave of Machpelah was nearby, it's quite possible that Abraham and his people found shelter there during the most troublesome times. If Abraham and all who were with him resorted to seeking shelter in the cave of Machpelah, then it was of great value to him. Abraham was willing to pay whatever the price may have been. He may have had an emotional attachment to it. Who knows? Perhaps the cave of Machpelah was the place where Jacob was conceived. We don't know. We only know that it was important to him. He purchased the cave and laid his wife to rest. Just as important as the cave of Machpelah was to Abraham, so too it was important to King Herod. King Herod, also known as Herod the Great, was born approximately 73 before the Common Era and died approximately in four before the Common Era. He was a Roman appointed king of Judea who ruled from 37 before the Common Era until the day he died. He was a practicing Jew of Arab descent. The Encyclopedia Britannica continues to inform that he was critical to imperial control of Judea despite his earlier support of Mark Antony and the Roman emperor increased his territory. Judea prospered under his early reign, during which he increased trade and built fortresses, aqueducts, and theaters. But he could not give full reign to his desire to build and thrive because he feared the Pharisees, Judaism's controlling faction who viewed him as a foreigner. 
Much later in the narrative, King Herod took a special interest in the cave of Machpela. Towards the very entrance of the cave, he built what is now known to us in English as the Tomb of the Patriarchs. In Arabic, the site is known as Haram el Khalil, the enclosure of Abraham, the friend of God. Concerning this Herodian monument, the complete pilgrim.com's homepage reads that it was the first great place of pilgrimage in ancient Israel and one of the world's oldest major religious shrines in general. According to a very old tradition, it is the place where the patriarchs Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are buried, along with their wives. The greatest of all patriarchal shrines, the site is highly reverent, not just by Jews, but by Christians and Muslims as well. For many Jews, it is considered to be the second holiest site in the world after the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. While the shrine above the cave was built at a much later period, it still dates back to the days of the Herodian kings, making it one of the most enduring Jewish religious sites still in operation. Sometime around the 19th century before the Common Era, after years of sojourning in the region between Beersheba and Hebron, Abraham purchased the cave of Machpela from one of from the Hittites for 400 silver shekels. It was originally intended for use as a sepulcher for his wife, Sarah, but over the next century, it became a family tomb with Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Rebecca, Jacob, and Leah all buried within. The body of Jacob was brought back from Egypt by the sons in what was effectively a state funeral and was probably the last to be interred within the cave. Of the patriarchal family, only Ishmael, the older son of Abraham, Hagar, the mother of Ishmael, Esau, the older son of Isaac, and Rachel, the second wife of Jacob, are not buried at the site. Following the return of the Israelites to Canaan after the Exodus, Hebron became an important center of Hebrew political and religious life. It was assigned by Joshua to the territory of the tribe of Judah and briefly served as capital of the United Kingdom of Israel during the early reign of David, who was also anointed here. After David's reign, Hebron no longer played a central role in Israelite history. However, the Israelite and subsequent Jewish communities continued to survive in Hebron almost continually over the centuries, even during the captivity and diaspora periods. Hebron may have the oldest continual Jewish community in existence. After the Bar Kokhba revolt in the second century AD, Hebron and the tomb of the patriarch changed hands numerous times. From the Romans, it transferred to the jurisdiction of the Byzantine Empire and the auspices of the Eastern Orthodox Church. Later, it was seized by Mom Muslims, Latin Crusaders, and finally by the Mamluks. Each subsequent conqueror apparently treated the site with reverence. And unlike virtually all other shrines in the Holy Land, the Herodian structure remained intact. Under the various Islamic dynasties, Hebron became a major pilgrimage destination for Muslims and though Jews continued to venerate the shrine, by the end of the 13th century, they were banned from entering. In the issuing years, the fortunes of the Jews of Hebron slowly embedded until the 20th century when significant numbers began to return to the area. Religious tensions between Hebron's Jews and Muslims broke out in open hostility in 1929, when many settlers in the area were killed and the rest forced to flee. Over the next 38 years, Jews were kept out of Hebron and all signs of Jewish habitation were destroyed. This state of affairs continued until 1967 when Israel annexed the city 
and Jews visited the shrine for the first time in centuries. While the tomb of the patriarchs has since been returned to Palestinian jurisdiction, it is now open to visitors of all faiths. For quite some time, no one knew what the cave of Machpelah looked like inside. The only thing known was that there was two caves. Questions arose as to, are these two caves side by side? Are the caves one on top of the other? How are the caves? It wasn't until our recent days that we've come to learn that these caves are side by side. The diagram to the right demonstrates what the cave looked like inside. Here, you have the, the interior etching where Abraham's body was laid. Then you had Isaac and Jacob, but you also had two other ones. And then there's a, a space here where they, you would hang your candle or your lamp. Without a doubt, the cave of Machpelah of special interest to Abraham, it was of special interest to King Herod of Judea because he constructed the tomb of the patriarchs. It is of great interest to me, and I hope you find this place of great interest and biblical importance. Amen. And Yahweh spoke to Moses saying, Speak to Aaron and to his sons, saying, On this wise you shall bless the children of Israel, saying to them, Yahweh bless you and keep you. Yahweh make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. <laughs> Ya erradonai panavelecha vehuneka Yisadonai panavelecha vayasem lecha